the top 10 ghetto foods. The ghettos of America represent the underbelly of society. They are a result of capitalism gone wrong, where people with no resources are bunched together inside a community leading to unexpected events. Although there's plenty of pain and beauty to be seen inside the ghetto, the ghetto has a lot of unique things to offer to the world, especially some of the foods that people choose to eat. So here is the top 10 ghetto foods. Number 10, pork. Pork is a necessary part of a ghetto person's diet. From bacon to pork chops, the delicious, flavorful, and salty taste will absolutely melt inside your mouth. The pig is an omnivorous animal and will eat almost anything. However, a ghetto person loves their pork. They are attracted to the high salt and sodium content and extremely low prices at their local discount store. The fats and other chemical concoctions are what make pork taste so good. Regardless of the health risk, many people living in a ghetto will pay top dollar for a good old pork chop. Number nine, catfish and tilapia. Ghetto people love seafood like crabs and lobster, but sometimes these shellfish are unavailable. Therefore, they will settle for catfish and tilapia. Catfish are similar to pork because they are scavengers that will actually eat the fecal matter of other water creatures. However, this doo-doo eater is a delicacy in the ghetto. People love eating catfish only if it's fried like nuggets. Some reports say that eating bacon is healthier than eating tilapia because this fish has shown in studies to cause or worsen inflammation that leads to heart disease, asthma, and even arthritis. Farm tilapia is the worst because it has cancer-causing agents derived from the high concentration of pesticides and antibiotics, regardless of the high amount of protein and toxicity. This is what makes it so tasty to people in the ghetto. Number eight, pork and beans. Pronounced pork and beans, this dish is baked canned beans sold commercially. It is very popular throughout the world, but seen to be a staple in a ghetto person's diet. Every ghetto home has a can of pork and beans sitting in the cabinet reserved to complete a meal of maybe oodles and noodles and hot dogs. Kids in a ghetto do not like beans, but when they are mixed with pork, they taste so delicious. Pork and beans originated in the 1800s and popularized in the 1980s. They are so popular that a notorious but historic housing project in Miami, Florida is named after this ghetto-licious dish. Number seven, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is a tasty concoction of flavor powder mixed with sugar water, made with dextrose, citrus acid, tartaric acid, flavoring, and food coloring. In 1928, Kool-Aid had only the six distinct colors. They were raspberry, cherry, grape, lemon, orange, and root beer. But now there is almost 100 flavors to choose from. Some of the most popular were red, blue, and grape. Drinking Kool-Aid regularly could lead to diabetes because of the high sugar content. But unfortunately, in the ghetto, more sugar means that the Kool-Aid would taste better. Kids start railing off the walls at home and school after drinking a lot of Kool-Aid. On the positive side, it could be used for a boost of energy. However, when the body do not use that energy, the sugar is converted into fat. So when it comes to weight, you might be better off drinking Gatorade or plain old H2O. Number six, liquor and blunts. 
Although these are not particularly fools in a traditional society, there are some people living in the ghetto who literally wake and bake early in the morning for breakfast and drink liquor for lunch instead of eating food. Blunts are cigars, and people in the ghetto will often remove the tobacco so they can fill the blunt paper with marijuana. Hunger is a byproduct of smoking weed. Therefore, people in the ghetto will consume whatever their stomach tells them. They will smoke for any type of celebration, graduations, birthdays, or simply for taking a number two. Some people live on liquor and blunts only in the ghetto. Number five, rice mix. Also known as rice aroni, this food is found in every discounted store around the country and inside every cabinet in the ghetto. People living in poverty will literally eat rice mix that will last them the whole day, a true survival food. Some people would mix hot dogs and even eggs with the rice to make a full meal. You can purchase it anywhere from 59 cents to $2, depending on where you buy the rice aroni from and the expiration date. It consists of white rice and vermicelli. You can cook it by putting butter or oil inside a pan and frying it until the vermicelli turns brown dark brown. Add two cups of water along with delicious tasty seasoning package and turn the eye down low and let the rice simmer for 15 minutes with a top on the pot. Then enjoy. Number four, McDonald's. Although McDonald's is not a food because it is a place to eat food. People in the ghetto seem to think that this restaurant is an actual food. They would take their family to eat out at McDonald's like it is a five-star restaurant while screaming, we're going to eat McDonald's or I want McDonald's instead of saying, I want to eat McDonald's or I want food from McDonald's. McDonald's is the food. The dollar menu offers an exquisite selection of favorite dishes to choose from. People wanting to save money will buy a value meal, which normally consists of a soda and french fries, if they have enough money. Many McDonald's in the ghettos have bulletproof windows and armed security guards because of the arguments and fights that flare up at any time. You can only sit at a booth for 30 minutes to enjoy your food. And then you got to get up and leave. If you go to McDonald's with your friends in the hood and they order something while you sit down and wait for them, do not be surprised if a security guard asks you to get up and leave. Supersize me. Number three, fried chicken. Although this is a stereotype People in the ghetto love them some fried chicken, smothered in delectable herbs and spices and buried in seasoned flour and deep fried to perfection. Fried chicken will absolutely melt inside your mouth. Some of the health issues that derive from eating too much fried chicken are obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Fried foods have saturated fats that are known for clogging arteries, which can lead to heart attack or stroke. Can you say, buck, buck? Number two, hot and flaming Cheetos. Created by a Mexican immigrant working as a janitor at the Frito-Lay factory in California, this idea came about when the machines broke down and the chips didn't get the usual shot of orange coating. So he experimented with some things that came up with the hot and flaming recipe by fusing Mexican herbs and spices such as chilies and limes to add to the chips. Many medical professionals say that eating hot and flaming chips will deliver an opioid-like state of ultimate relaxation. Number one, Morichan Raymond Noodles. Also known as ramen noodles, this is a true delicacy in the ghetto, originating and popularized after World War II when the United States gave Japan a large supply of wheat. The Japanese government encouraged producers to make ramen noodles out of it. By 1971, ramen noodles hit America and became very popular among students wanting to save money and thrifty households. The main ingredient for the noodles are flour, water, and salt 
therefore expect a lot of carbs and starches. Ramen noodles are so popular that it is used as a currency in the U.S. prison system. An inmate could get their wig split over a pack of instant ramen noodles. If it wasn't for ramen noodles, some people in the ghetto would not have any food to eat. You have just heard the top 10 ghetto food. Thank you for listening to my video, man. I would like for everyone to check out some of my books below in the description box. One of them is the Locked Up Abroad Analyzation Guide, where I give my perspective on um, the episode in Ecuador with um, Jake and Dutch and whatever. Another book that I got is the Becoming Homelessness in Las Vegas Survival Guide. And coming up soon is a Chicago travel guide. It's either going to be called How to Stay Safe in Chicago or Surviving the Streets of Chicago. Something along those lines. Thanks for listening, Pete.